Hello guys, welcome back to Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the basics of the reinforcement details. In this lecture, I will mainly cover the requirements for the bent-up bar, the overlapping length for the compressive and tension members, and the standard hook length for different types of the hooks, and also the length of legs and the column and footing. So, starting with the bent-up bar, by looking into this reinforcement this is the reinforcement shown here in this figure and we have two types of bent in this reinforcement bar one is here on the left side and one is here due to which this type of bar is known as the bent up bar because it has been bended at the different locations and why we provide this bend it is important to know if i explain with the help of the diagram let's consider this is any beam supported at various points so when the load acts on this beam, it will deflect like this way. So, it shows here the positive bending moment here, while it shows the negative bending moment here at this support. So, we need to provide the reinforcement at the bottom here and at the top here for negative bending moment. So, what we do, we don't want to cut out the reinforcement just by providing here and then here. What we do, we use bent up bars. So this reinforcement here goes like this and then it is bended and goes like this. So we have this, this performs the positive actions. This is used for the, to resist the positive bending moment and this reinforcement now is used for the negative bending moment. So we don't want to cut the reinforcement but we bend the reinforcement bar so it can play the role in the positive bending moment as well as in the negative bending moment. So with one type of bar we can take uh, the uh, we can resist the bend, positive bending moment as well as the negative bending moment. That's why we use the bent up bar. If you look into the dimensions, that what should be this bent length if we are using the bent up bar in our beam or in slips. So this bent length depends on the angle of the this bend. If I suppose this is a theta, so this length depends on this theta. So there are three main angles most commonly used. If theta is 30 degree, then this length is 0.27D, where D is the diameter of this whole steel bar. So if we increase the angle to 45 degree, this bent angle is now 45 degree so the length of this bent becomes 0.42 d which is most commonly used and if our bent angle is 60 degree this angle becomes 60 degree then our this bent length becomes 0.58 d where d is the diameter of this steel bar so and what should be this length of this bent bar this portion what should be this length and this length should be equal to the l by 4 where l is this total length of the steel bar similarly this length is also equal to l by 4 where l is this length so putting the L value of length l here dividing by 4 we can achieve this length and similarly here this length this bend length is equal it depends on these three criteria depends on the angle of bend now what is lapping length and why we provide the overlapping of the steel bars and beams are in columns is the length of the beams or the height of the column is more than the length of the reinforcement so what we do we provide the overlapping of the steel bars so let's suppose this is one steel bar and this is the another steel bar and these steel bars are less in length is compared to the length of the beam so we we overlap these two two steel bars so this length is known as the overlapping length of the steel and for tension members tension member means for slabs and for beams this length for tension members this length is mostly taken as 40 into d where D is the diameter of this bar or maybe of this bar. So this length 
depends on the diameter and the constant value of 40. For the tension member, we should always consider this is 40D. Why? If we overlap the two steel bars in case of the compressive members, now for example, the columns are maybe the piers and bridges. So what should be this length? This length should be equal to 50 into D, where D is again the diameter of these steel bars. So this value in case of the compressive member is higher than this of the tension members because tension members are usually ductile as compared to the compressor members. Compressor members show brittle behavior due to which we don't want to take risk. That's why we take higher value of the overlapping so that load can be more safely transferred from the above structure member to the lower structure members. While in case of the beams or the slaves, this overlapping length is taken as less as they are not is much critical as compared to the compressor member. Now let's discuss about the hook bar. There are three different standard hook bars mostly used in the stirrups design. These are the 90 degree hook, 135 degree hook and 180 degree hook. If we are using the 90 degree hook, it means that the angle of this stirrups, these are the stirrups while these are the main reinforcement bar. This is the cross section. So if, if I look into the the stirrup detail so this is the hook bar with the 90 degree this degree is 90 degree so in case of the 90 degree hook bar the length of this hook should be equal to the 12 into diameter of the bar when d is the diameter of the stirrup used in this design similarly in the case of the 135 degree if this is my hook and it comes makes an angle of 135 degree here so the length of this hook bar should be equal to the 8 into diameter of the bar which is less than that of the 12 because we don't need a higher hook length because the angle is more. So more angle means there is a more anchorage of the steel bar into the concrete. That's why we use less value of the anchorage, less value of the hook bar. With the 180 degree, if you see this, this steps, uh, it it makes an angle of 180 degree here you see here there's a 180 degree so the length of this hook hook bar should be equal to the foot d which is the minimum one as compared to these 90 degree and 135 degree because there is more anchorage of this steps with the concrete and we don't want to take the high value of the anchorage if we have higher angle of the bend so with 180 degree it is the least value of the hook bar which is 4 into D where D is the diameter of the stirrup used here in this cross section. Similarly, AD, D is the diameter of this stirrup. Now the last topic is about the length of the leg. This type of the reinforcement is mostly used in the combination of column and footing. The reinforcement of the column is being extended into the footing so that the load from the column is easily transferred into the footing and this bent length should be this bent length is also called as the leg of the reinforcement and this leg length should be equal to the 16 into diameter of this bar similarly the length of this leg should also be equal to the 16 into d where d is the diameter of this bar and the minimum length of this leg reinforcement should be 12 inches. Hope you guys understand some of the basics of the reinforcement detailing. For daily civil engineering videos, don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you for watching our video.